In So You Want to Be a Game Master, I use the dungeon as the perfect scenario for a first-time game master. This is because the dungeon scenario structure naturally firewalls each room. If you're the game master, particularly if you're a new game master, you don't have to keep the entire adventure in your head. You only have to think about the room the PCs are currently standing in, one room at a time. All the information you need right now almost certainly fits on a single page, and you don't have to worry about anything else until the PCs choose an exit and go to the next room. Which will, of course, also be firewalled. It's like juggling one ball. Once you're no longer a beginning game master, though, you're going to start using techniques that break down this firewall. In the book, I talk about dynamic dungeons, dungeons that come to life around the PCs and react to what they're doing. You're not going to completely abandon the advantages of the clearly defined room key, of course. I mean, there's no reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But you will slowly stop thinking about the dungeon only one room at a time, and you'll start adding extra dimensions and complexity to your dungeon scenarios. You're going to start juggling multiple balls. You're going to start running advanced dungeons. If you're running a dungeon like the Tomb of Geisingax, the epic new adventure from Luke Gygax and Alphineus Goo, the sponsors of today's video, one example of an advanced dungeon technique you might use is an adversary roster. With an adversary roster, instead of keying encounters to specific firewalled rooms, you'll instead track all the denizens of the dungeon as they move around the location, living their lives and responding to the incursions of the players. I'll be making a video about adversary rosters in the future, so make sure to hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss that. But running a big adversary roster can mean juggling, well, a lot of balls. We can start with something simpler, though and dip our toes into running advanced dungeons by looking at dungeon clues. Generally speaking, a dungeon clue is information in one room of the dungeon that influences or determines the PC's actions in a different room. But this can be as simple as having a, a key in room 11 that opens a door in room 41. Now, other clues there will be more complicated, perhaps requiring a, a series of revelations gleaned from clues in multiple locations before the final solution can be found. For example, you might have a, a diary in room 25 written by a goblin child that mentions that she used to hide her dolls under a loose floorboard in room 11. That's where the key is, of course, and now the PCs can retrieve it and open the door in room 41. As you can see here, a particularly effective technique is to design your dungeon clues so that the PCs will be forced to crisscross the dungeon, gaining information in Area A that takes them to Area B before sending them back to Area A to complete the sequence. These types of interactions transform the dungeon from, from a linear experience to a multi-dimensional one, in which expertise and knowledge gained from one traversal of the dungeon become rewards when the players revisit those locations a second time. In sufficiently complex dungeons, you can have multiple enigmas featuring overlapping patterns of dungeon clues in play at the same time. This creates navigational interest in the dungeon, because the players now have to figure out, well, their own priorities, and they try to find the best routes for fulfilling the goals they choose. However, dungeon clues often aren't required to successfully complete a scenario. For example, the PCs could have found the loose floorboard and the key in room 11 without ever reading the goblin child's diary. Or alternatively, they could have chopped the door down, or cast a knock spell, or, or found any number of other options for getting through the door in room 41. But if a particular revelation is required for the scenario, you will want to remember and honor the three clue rule, which I've discussed in a previous video that I'll link to in the uh, font of all knowledge down below. The great thing about dungeon clues, though, is the effect they have on players. As the game master, dungeon clues usually aren't something you need to think about too much while actually running the game. Instead, you can, you know, mull them over at your leisure during prep, and then bake them into your room key so you don't have to think about them anymore. Your players, on the other hand, will be actively engaged with these clues. They'll be collecting them, thinking about them, and trying to figure them out at the table. In fact, all of the advanced dungeon techniques we're going to talk about, uh, dungeon clues, adversary rosters, xandering, dungeon factions, don't just break down your firewall. 
They also force the players to stop thinking about the dungeon one room at a time and start thinking about the dungeon as a whole. In other words, the players will stop thinking only about the tactics of their immediate circumstances and start thinking strategically about the whole scenario. Once the players have been nudged in that direction, you'll discover that their strategic consideration of the dungeon will, will feed back into the scenario itself, creating dynamic interactions that were, were never explicitly part of your prep. The deliberately placed dungeon clues will get them thinking about how Room 11 and Room 33 relate to each other. And now that they're thinking like that, they'll also think about using a passwall spell to move from Room 14 to Room 22, or tricking the goblins in Room 9 through 12 so that they'll attack the ogre in Room 41, or scavenging alchemists' fire from the traps in the lower hallways to destroy the cursed tapestries in Room 42. This dynamic play on the part of your players will, in turn, give you the opportunity of rising to the challenge and finding more ways to actively play the scenario and bring your dungeon to life. I'll have more on that in our next video on advanced dungeon design. This video, on the other hand, would not have been possible without the support of GUI Cube. Their Kickstarter for the Tomb of Geisingax is running right now. The tomb is much more than just an adventure. It's an entire campaign setting with materials designed to to enthrall your players, while dramatically cutting your prep time as a game master. There are dozens of spectacular NPC cards, magic item cards, art handouts, poster maps, and more. Good gaming. This is Justin Alexander, and I'll see you at the table.